also to other families that have lost loved ones this year or any years before. Um, the poem is titled, In Times of Need. The Lord is my shelter in times of a storm. He holds me and carries me and keeps me safe and warm. The Lord is my comfort in times I need peace. He wipes my tears away and my tears start to cease. The Lord is my friend when all of them leave. He stays by my side and forever will clean. That, that's Amen. 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 Good job, Miss Brittany. God bless you. Good job. Amen. 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 Appreciate that, Miss Brittany. God bless you. Does anybody else have a, a word of praise, a word of thanks? You'd like to brag on the Lord tonight? Does anybody have anything? Maybe an answered prayer. Just thank the Lord for your salvation. Anybody? All right. If no one has a word, does anybody have a song tonight that they'd like to sing? Does anybody have a song this evening that they'd like to share? All right. Uh, uh, Heath, you're going to keep on. You get in trouble. <laughs> All right. Well, it doesn't look like uh, no one has a song then. So James chapter number five. <laughs> James chapter number five uh, for our text. Uh, we'll pick up reading uh, uh, in verse number 13. And we'll read down through verse number 16. And we'll just see how far along the Lord allows us to progress tonight. But James chapter 5, verse number 13, the word of God tells us, uh, uh, Is any among you afflicted? Amen. Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Amen. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if you have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Right. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to bless the reading of the scriptures tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we are thankful for this time that you've allowed us to come uh, to your house this evening to worship thee in spirit and truth. And Lord, we are thankful for the songs of Zion that have already been sang and for the testimonies and the, uh, the, the poem and everything that uh, we've already heard. Uh, Father, we just give thee the thanks and the praise and the honor and the glory, dear Lord, for being so kind and gracious to us. And Lord, we're thankful for the breath of life you've given us to enjoy creation and for the health and ability to be here. And Lord, we're thankful for your word and for the instruction and truth uh, that we receive from thy word. And Father, tonight, as we look to the bread of life, Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would uh, uh, feed our spiritual souls this evening. Give us manna from heaven tonight, dear Lord. Help us to learn something to help us in our daily walk with thee. And Lord, I'd ask and pray that you'd help me as I preach. Lord, I pray that you'd give me that anointing of the Holy Ghost to preach with clarity of thought and clarity of speech. And Lord, I pray that uh, you would strengthen my heart and lungs, dear Lord, uh, that I'd be able to exalt and preach thy word. Yeah. And Father, if there's one here tonight that's in our midst, that's lost and without Christ, I pray that before they leave here tonight, this would be the night that they would come forward and receive thee as Lord and Savior. And Lord, we just ask and pray all these things in Jesus' name. And amen. amen. Right. Notice here in verse number 13, there's a question given at the very beginning of this verse. Is any among you, uh, is any among you afflicted? And the word afflicted here uh, uh, comes uh, 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 from a, a Greek word, apatheia. And uh, beloved, it means here, is any, um, is any among you afflicted? In other words, are you going through heavy burdens or trials? And that's important for us to understand are you going through a heavy burden or a trial right now? Are you afflicted? It's not talking about a physical injury here. It's talking about going through a trial or a tribulation. And beloved, I believe all of us can answer yes to that. Amen. And beloved, uh, when you're going through a trial or when you're going through a, a difficult time, if you will, we try to reach the resolution a lot of times within our own strength and within our own resources. Or I know I try to. You know, if something goes wrong, uh, let's say at the house, and my wife will testify to this, there's been things tear up at the house that when I go through and I take the time to stop and pray and ask the Lord to give me wisdom, give me direction, 
You know what? I'm able to go through and repair yeah. and able to restore and put things back yeah. in proper order. It goes better. And uh, sometimes when you go through and I don't pray, yeah. I'm in a hurry. Oh, this is not going to take a lot of time. This shouldn't be difficult at all. Usually I end up tearing up something and making it tenfold worse. Why is the difference between the two? The text tells us here, let him pray. Let him pray. Amen. And so, beloved, when you're going through a trial or a tribulation, how do you react and respond to that? Do you react in the flesh and try to resolve the problem within your own strength or within your own uh, resource, if you will? Or do you take the time to step back and pray to God and ask God to give you wisdom, ask God to give you direction, ask God to intervene. What's taking place? Bless him, Lord. But the command given here is let him pray. Yeah. And so, beloved, when we're going through difficult burdens and trials and storms, the first thing that you and I should do as a Christian is give it to the Lord in the matter and the form of prayer. Now, how often do we really, truly, Bless realistically Lord. practice that in our daily lives? Uh, when I was going through and doing this study and I come across this, yeah. it's very convicting. Sure. Very convicting. Us, uh, so notice here, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Notice the next question, is any merry? Are you happy? Are you rejoicing? Are you joyful? Yeah. Let him sing psalms. Uh, beloved, when you get saved, the Lord puts a new song in your heart. Yes, and you're no longer singing about friends in low places. <laughs> you're singing at Calvary Amen. and the old rugged cross Amen. and amazing grace, praise be to God. Amen. And beloved, even in the difficult times, notice the order of the text. If you're afflicted and going through a difficult time, pray. If you're happy, yes, sing and rejoice. And beloved, one way to get through trials and one way to get through tribulations is to sing praise unto God. Amen. It will help you overcome and get through the valley and the dark time in your life. Yes, it will. Uh, the Bible tells us, uh, uh, the Bible tells us, uh, let's see here, we'll get to the, uh, Psalm chapter 146, verse number two. While I live, will I praise the Lord? Uh, beloved, that, 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 you ought to mark that in your Bible. Yes. As long as we have breath as a child of God, Amen, uh, beloved, we ought to be praising the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, beloved, we have no problem praising a ball player. Amen. We have no problem praising a rock and roll singer or band. Amen. We have no problem praising a, a company. Bless beloved, what's wrong with praising Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 There's only one name given amongst men whereby we must be saved, and it's the yeah. name of Jesus. Amen. If there's a name to exalt and to Amen. praise tonight, it's the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's right, brother. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Bless him, Lord. Uh, beloved, I know we all go through difficult times. I know Bless we Lord. most of us is labor today. I know you're tired. Bless but beloved, the fact of the matter is we still ought to give praise and thanks to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In Psalm chapter 147, verse number one, praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praise is comely. Uh, beloved, let me tell you something. God rejoices when his children praise and exalts his name. It honors and glorifies him. And beloved, when other people see you and you're going through a difficult time and you can still sing amazing grace and how great thou art and it is well with my soul. Hey, it glorifies God and it shows what's taking place in your heart. And as we sing that song, my God is real. Praise be to God. Yeah, man, sure is, brother. Uh, in Hebrews man. chapter 2, verses 7 through 12, the word of God tells us, Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Bless Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put, put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is uh, not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him, but we see Jesus who Bless was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. And he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. 
Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Yeah. All lives truly matter to Jesus Christ. That's Amen. Right, he tasted death for every man. Yes, he did. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bring many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Amen. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are of the same one for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise Amen. unto thee. Amen. I read all of that. and there's a limited, That's Amen. loaded. That's about a six-week study right there in those Amen. verses. Amen. But beloved, I said all that to say this, that last verse in verse number 12 of Hebrews chapter 2, uh, verse number 12, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. Amen. Uh, beloved, that's why we have singing in our yeah. churches. Yeah. That's why we allow time for you to sing a song Bless to you. exalt and yeah. praise his name. Amen. Amen. Uh, beloved, yeah. a lot of times you come in and uh, uh, a lot of times you come in and uh, uh, you're defeated and you're discouraged and somebody sings a song that just lifts your spirits and yeah. renews your mind yeah. and it's a blessing to you. Sure. Uh, beloved, that's why we need a new song in our heart and we need to Bless sing praise unto God. And notice here the third question that's mentioned here in two verses. Is any sick among you? Now notice the difference in verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Talking about heavy trials or burdens or difficulties. Now we get here to verse number 14. Is any sick among you? And the translation right here literally means a person that is sick. They've almost rendered helpless, if you will. Uh, they're without strength, if you will. They're not able to take care of themselves. They're afflicted with some type of infirmity, and they don't have health, and they don't have strength. Amen. I, believe, I think we all know some people not that's uh, afflicted, if you will, sure. with physical infirmities. Sure. Is any among you, uh, or excuse me, is any sick among you? Now notice this. Let him call for the elders of the church. Yeah. Uh, beloved of the call for the elders because they're not able to pray for themselves. And so they call for the elders of the church to come in and to pray over them yeah. and to pray with them if they can pray at all, if you will. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the yeah. name of the Lord. That's right. And we know that oil is representative of what? Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God. And so they come in and they stand over the individual and they intercede for them and they anoint them with oil yes. and they pray over them. Right. Our beloved, we practice this here at our church. Yeah. Our beloved, it is a scriptural truth. Yeah. It's a scripture. I believe that churches ought to practice this scripturally right. and God will move in this. Yes. God will move in this. Amen. Now, is everybody that's ever been prayed over and has been anointed with oil been healed? No, they have not. But some have been. But beloved, the fact of the matter is that all of the healing, and I'm working my way up to this, all of the healing comes from one individual. Amen. It comes from Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we see an individual here that is very sick, not able to fend for themselves, not able to function properly. They call for the elders. They come in and pray over them, anointing them with oil. And notice here in verse number 15, and the prayer of faith. Yeah. You have to ask right. believing. Right. Trusting God that he's going to hear your prayer yeah. and answer your prayer. Uh, beloved, there are a lot of prayers that are prayed, but they're prayed not believing. Yeah. They're not prayer of faith. Bless I've Lord. seen people come up to the altar time and time again. Bless I'm going to give it to the Lord this time, preacher. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I'm going to cast this over to the Lord. I'm going to let him take care of it. And they come up here and they pray with all their heart and they cry out with God. And beloved, when they stand up and they walk back to their pew, Bless they pick that burden, that trial, whatever it is, and they carry it back with them. Bless That's not a faith. That's not a faith. Bless him, Lord. Uh, beloved, when you give it to the Lord, you completely surrender it and give it to him. Amen. But now if you're going to take it back from the Lord, Amen. Uh, beloved, sometimes your prayers may not get answered the way you anticipate they're going to get answered. That's right, amen. And so in the prayer of faith, she'll save the sick. And the word Bless save here means to heal the sick. Notice here, and the Lord shall raise him up. Notice here, 
where the healing comes from. And who shall raise him up? Benny Hinn? No. Any of these other type of preachers that have these healing revivals, their name's not mentioned there. That's exactly right. And the Lord shall raise him up. Amen. Now, beloved, I am thankful for medication. I am thankful for procedures and surgeries. I am thankful for doctors. I'm thankful for scientific knowledge that we have. God uses these things to provide healing to our bodies. Uh, beloved, I spoke with a doctor recently, and he's a believer. And we were sitting there talking, and he said, uh, we got to talking about the Lord, and he said, you know, he said, it's really a humbling experience to be in my position. And I'm like, this is going to be interesting. And he said, it's a very humbling experience. He said, you know, we'll go through and practice all this and get all this education and uh, have all this uh, uh, science and have all this medication uh, available at our fingertips. But he said, at the end of the day, I'm just an instrument used of God. Amen. He said, you know where the healing comes from, don't yeah. you? And I said, you better believe I know where it comes yeah. from. Amen. Now, I thank God for doctors and nurses and for medication. I thank the Lord for these things. But beloved, these are instruments that God uses yeah. to provide healing to us. Yeah. But ultimately, all the healing comes from the Lord in some yeah. form or some fashion. It all comes back to the Lord. And the Lord shall raise him up. And notice here, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. There's a small yeah. word in this verse that's very important. The word if. Yeah. And if he have committed sins. Uh, beloved, there's a contention of people that believe out there that every time an individual gets sick, it's the judgment of God upon their body. No. That's not true. That is not scriptural at all. That's right. That's right. Uh, beloved, there are people that's recorded in the Bible that were sick. Yeah. Uh, beloved, that there is no recognized sin from the scriptures that God mentions that he's chastening them or punishing them for any specific sin. Right. Bless you. Uh, the fact of the matter is, uh, beloved, uh, there are people out there. I've had, I, I know one gentleman. I know every time somebody gets sick, oh, they must be out of the will of God. They must have willful sin in their life. God bought the flu upon them. Uh, God bought the, the cold upon them. God bought cancer upon them. There's no scripture to support that whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> amen. Exactly. With friends like that, you don't need enemies. Amen. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, there is no scriptural evidence. And Job is a classic example yes, uh, for this. Epaphroditus is another Bless example you know. in the New Testament. Uh, there's a gentleman in the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 8, a man that was blind from his birth. Yeah. And they questioned and said, yeah. what sin has his parents done or this man yeah. committed yeah. that he's blind from yeah. birth? He said, he's done nothing. They've done nothing. Yeah. But that God may be glorified. That's exactly right. And by the way, Jesus came across this man, yeah. spat in the mud, stirred it up, yeah. and put it on the man's eyes, and restored back his sight. Yeah. And you can read that in Luke Amen. chapter 8, verses 40 through 48. For time's sake, we won't go through it tonight. But beloved, there's no scriptural evidence that every time a person gets sick, God is right. chastening you. Now, there are times that, yes, God will bring about sickness to chasten a child of God to repent and confess his sin and turn back to him. And notice here, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. And so if you have done something, and beloved, I believe that if God chastens you and brings something into your life, some type of infirmity, some type of sickness, God through the Holy Spirit will reveal to you what's taking place. He'll say, I'm chasing you and it's for this sin. Now, I don't know it. Your neighbor don't know it. Your wife may not know it. But if you're a child of God, you know exactly what God's speaking to you about. And so, beloved, to be forgiven of your sins as a child of God, what do you do? First John 1, I. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so in the context of the text, yes, prayer will heal somebody who's sick. And beloved, if they confess that sin and ask for forgiveness of that sin, they'll be forgiven of that sin that causes that sickness. Does everybody understand that? But not all sickness comes about because of sin. 
God may just want to use you to glorify his name and bring you through a sickness or infirmity and provide healing to you so that he would get the glory and the honor from it. Yeah. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. Does everybody see that? And so, notice here in verse number 16, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I want to break this up into two parts and I want us to look at the first part tonight and we'll pick up with the latter next week if it be the Lord's will. Confess your faults one to another. This is not talking about confessing your specific sin one to another. This is confessing your faults, your errors, but not your sin. Now, beloved, for those that uh, practice Roman Catholicism, that puts a real damper in their doctrine because it doesn't say to go to a priest. Amen. Right. Now, beloved, we're to confess our shortcomings one to another. We confess our sin to the great priest, the high priest, Amen. who sits at the right-hand side of God, Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, you can go down here on West Andrew Johnson Highway and walk into their building and walk back there and talk to a man all day long yeah. and ask him to forgive you and intercede for you. It ain't going to work. That's right. Uh, yeah. Beloved, you have to ask for forgiveness of your sin yourself, and it goes to Jesus Christ, Amen. not to a man. Amen. Amen. That's right. And so, beloved... Confess your faults one to another. Uh, we heard a testimony this past Sunday night, uh, and I don't think Brother Jeremy would mind me uh, 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 sharing this, but he talked about going out into a far country and talked about some of the things he got into while he was in the far country. Right. But praise be to God that he came to his senses like the prodigal son and left the far country and came back to the Father. Praise be to God. Amen. Now, he wasn't confessing his sin he was confessing his faults to us. That's right. He confesses his sin to God. Amen. He was confessing his mistakes to us. Right. Faults. Does everybody see the difference here between That's the right. two? Yeah, true. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. Yes. And beloved, we are to pray one for another. Pray without ceasing. Uh, Brother Larry shared, or Brother Sammy, whichever one he is tonight. <laughs> uh, he uh, was thanking the church for praying for the situation with Dinky. And now she's able to have her surgery. She's recovering, doing much better. That's right, And others have thanked the church for praying and interceding. JB, in regard to Bonnie, you know, Bonnie was on her deathbed. And when I walked up to the hospital and prayed with Bonnie, Bless him more. Could go, asking for an elder to come pray. Now, I didn't take oil with me, but I did go over and pray over her. Bless him I'll be honest with you. Now, I told JB this. When I left the hospital, I thought the next time I would see her would be at her de uh, uh, service, her funeral service. I didn't think she would make it out. Now, let me tell you something. With God... All things Amen. are possible, Amen. praise be unto God. Amen. And God restored her health back to her. Amen. That's great. And beloved, I don't know why her infirmity was brought about. I don't know. Uh, J.D. may think uh, her calling him 50 times is some type of sin. I, I don't know about that. No, but the fact of the matter is, God has done a work in Bonnie's life for whatever reason, and God is getting the glory from it. Amen. Amen. You see. Amen. And so, yes, we're to pray one for another. Amen, brother. Now, beloved, this lost world out here is not going to pray for you. That's right. And, beloved, if you and I, as children of God, don't pray one for another, Bless may you. I ask you this question? Yeah. Who is going to? Right. That's right. Who's going to? We better pray one for another. And let me tell you something. You. When you start praying for a brother and sister in Christ, the differences of opinion, the differences of personality and your attitude toward that person Bless will change Amen. because you intercede for them. You get closer yeah. to God and you realize, you know what? God help me. He's a Florida Gator fan. I just can't pray for him. He likes Florida. Well, I pray for him anyway. I pray for him anyway, Brother Heath. <laughs> you know, and the fact of the matter is, it doesn't make any difference to me whether or not he likes Florida or not. The fact of the matter is he's a brother in Christ and I'm concerned for his soul and for his family and I'm going to pray for him. Amen. Amen. And so that praying one for another unites us yes. and it helps set aside those differences and those divisions. Amen. 
you see. Yes. Pray one for another that you may be healed. And so, beloved, we certainly need to pray one for another for all types of healings, do we not? There are some that need spiritual healing tonight. And I'm not talking about loss of salvation. I'm talking about a renewing of their heart and their mind and a rededication of their life to take up the cross for Jesus and bear it daily. We need to pray one for another, yes, in regard to physical healing, financial needs, employment needs, emotional needs, psychological needs. There's a lot of things that we can pray one for another about. It's been said, and I've not done a, a recent research or study in regard to this, but the fact of the matter is this. It's been said that the average Christian prays about 10 minutes a day. 10 minutes a day. Now, beloved, I would dare say tonight, and there's probably about 25 of us here this evening, that if we all were to assemble together on this altar and start with whoever is first in line and go right down the line, we would be here for another 45 minutes praying one for another. And that's just us that are here tonight. And then we'd pray for those that are not here for whatever reason. The Lord knows their circumstance. Pray for them. And then we pray collectively for our church. And then we pray collectively for the lost. And then we pray for our nation. And then we pray for the leadership of our nation. And then we pray for our missionaries. Guess what? We'd be here till about midnight, will we not? Why has the church lost its power? It's because it's quit praying. It's quit praying. And beloved, when you see God working in a church, I'll guarantee you one of the roots to that church being successful yeah. and God's spirit moving in it yeah, that's right. is because the congregation is a praying Amen, congregation. Amen. It's a praying Amen. congregation. Yeah. And then notice the type of prayer, and we'll study this if it be the Lord's will next week. We'll break this down into four or five different segments next week. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. And we'll break that down next week Bless by the grace of God. But at this time, I'd like to invite everybody, if you would, to stand, please. Everyone's standing. <coughs> Everyone's heads bowed. Everyone's eyes closed. <coughs> the musicians will make their way over to the instruments. I want to ask a question here tonight. Maybe there's someone here this evening. And the Holy Spirit of God has spoken to you and you're here tonight and you've never been saved or you're not for sure heaven would be your home for eternity. And friend, if you're here tonight and you've never been saved or you're not for sure heaven will be your home for eternity, I'd like for you to raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm not going to come to you to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you out, but I'm going to pray for you that the Lord would speak to your heart tonight and that you'd come forward this evening and ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and save you. Anybody like that, say, Preacher, pray for me. All right, I'm speaking to saved people now. Say, Preacher, when you pray, would you pray for me? Me and my family have many needs, and the Lord knows all about them. And when you pray, would you include me and my family in your prayers? Would you slip your hand at this time? Yeah. God bless you. I see those hands. Dear, kind, and gracious Heavenly Father, you saw the hands that were raised. You know the needs of your people. And Father, I pray for each and every person, each and every family that's here. And Lord, I pray that your hand of blessing would be upon each and every one. And for those that could not be here tonight, Lord, you know their needs, you know their circumstance. And Father, I pray that you would bless them wherever they may be. And Father, I pray now that you bless this invitation. Have your will and way. For it's in Jesus' name we do ask it all. And now with our heads bowed and eyes closed, as the musicians play, if you need to come do business with the Lord, I invite you to come.
obey the Lord this evening. people said amen 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 Amen. well there's a couple things i want to give you i'm not going to preach another message but uh uh, when i was trying to give you the greek at the start of the message uh i looked at the wrong greek word and so i want to clarify that tonight i heard brother james knox Knox preach one time he was he was encouraging young preachers he said he said you young preacher boys he said i want to tell you something he said you get up you start reading greek he said if you'll just make it sound like you know what you're talking about the pronunciation (laughs) will probably you make it sound like you know what you're saying. It'll go over just fine. They won't know the difference. I don't know if I'm getting this right or not, but in verse number 13, the Greek word for afflicted is kukapatheo. That's the best I can do with it, okay? In verse number 14, the Greek translation for the word sick, and I'm pretty sure this one's right, is astaneo. There's a difference, two different words there. I just want to be sure I went over that with you because that would bug me if I didn't. And I, I know I did pronounce it right to begin with, and I'm like, well... Let me just rectify that at the end of the service. <laughs> and so anyway, uh, uh, I'm not real good on Greek pronunciation. I am East Tennessee enunciation, but not Greek pronunciation. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I hope everybody has a wonderful week and a blessed week. And I certainly hope that everybody will be able to make it Saturday to the Christmas dinner and exchange. I hope everybody's able to make it. And so everybody's invited and I hope that you'll be here. And then uh, please be praying and laboring for the upcoming Lord's Day uh, this Sunday, Sunday School at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock preaching. Yes, Brother Tony, go ahead. Uh, Yeah, I'd like to share something with the church that, excuse me, that the Lord uh, has done for me this week. Uh, You know, uh, and it starts uh, with a verse of 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. And because of prayers, you know, and he answers them sometimes on the spot, and sometimes it may not be, it may be 26 years. He's answered one for my arm that was injured many years ago. And, and I happened to remember that <clears throat> he anointed me with oil over uh, Tabernacle Baptist Church. I think it was back in 2011. And then nine years later, or about eight, eight and a half years later, it was actually healed. And he worked through a doctor and, and the modern medication. But uh, it's those those prayers are not always instant, instant. Uh, but but they will happen if we just have a faith. Right. And uh, I had a situation with my short-term disability. Just it run out uh, <clears throat> the 18th of this month. And uh, because of being a Christian and doing the right thing and having a good rapport with upper management, the HR manager texted me Sunday to let me know it had run out and for me to contact uh, Lincoln Financial. Well, I did so, and I went to a therapy, and they sent all of the paperwork necessary for that. And time had run out; it was time for payroll to, to be put in. And uh, he he called me that morning, texted me again, uh, which was Tuesday morning, and said, uh, uh, "You know, we've got to do payroll. Do you want to go ahead and do your vacation that you are owed? Because they would either pay me now or at the end of the year." And that amount of vacation was exactly to the penny of what my uh, 
payment would have been. Amen. Praise the Lord. So Amen. We got off Praise the, the Lord. It's good. We got off of the phone, and no sooner than we uh, got off of the phone, he texts me back. He said he just got a confirmation. Lincoln Financial approved it till uh, January the third, so it didn't have to use it then anyway, and it didn't mess up things. But either way, he the Lord had it worked out. Amen. Yeah. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Just, Praise uh, the Lord. I just yeah. wanted to share Bye. that, you know, because Amen. Uh, Amen. You know, we need to encourage them along the way. You know. Amen. We don't know what each one of our other brothers and sisters may be going through. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just keep praying. God will work it out. Keep the faith. Amen. 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 Now, I don't know about you, but I enjoy hearing things like Amen. that. Amen. That just blesses yes. my soul. And I can rejoice with the brethren when I hear about answered prayer. Amen. What he's done for Brother Tony, what he's done for Jeremy. I think Amen. about Billy and Lisa. I think about Sammy and uh, yeah. uh, Larry over here <laughs> and others. I mean, we, uh, Bonnie, we can yeah. just go on and on and on out. Amen. Yeah. Isn't, isn't God just a wonderful, yes, gracious, yeah. awesome God, I mean, goodness gracious, I mean, yeah. for what he does for us and how he blesses, I mean, yes, how can man. you not just want yeah. to praise man. him and thank him right, and glorify right. him, man, man. Yeah. And praise be to God. You know, Pastor, let me say this real quick. Tony talking about that and you talking about the oil. I, I'm not Tony. I got anointed. I know first day I was here, well, I think we had a singing that night, uh, Pastor, now it's his situation and said he'd be anointed. I got anointed too, but it went on, I got anointed, and I thought, Lord, you know, I've, I've, I've done what the Bible says and everything. Still, for about a year, but they didn't know if I was going to make it or not, for about a year. And uh, that's why I, I really deep, deeply rejoice, because I can relate to that. With Pastor, I, I went about a year not knowing if I was ever going to see a turnaround. When I'm talking about, what I'm talking about is, well, the good news is the numbers dropped from 500 something, my understanding, to 100 something. But I, I went about a year like that, them not knowing if I was going to, you know, be okay or not. But God done it in His time. Amen. I Amen. wanted it in my time, oh. I right. wanted sons and I just wanted, you know, I wanted to go back and just say, well, it's gone. But it, that wasn't God's plan, was it? Right. But anyway, and uh, I'll say this uh, please don't think I'm not being sociable. Sometime, I'm in a situation sometimes that I have to go out of town. Uh, about something, things. And uh, I won't be able to be here Saturday, but uh, I was going to have Sherry to give me a picture of Alan and put it on a sweater, so if anybody wants that, I guarantee you'll win first place. Christy <laughs> 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 <Well, we're still laughs> said she wants it, so she claimed that. She, she'll win. She'll win first place. <laughs> 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 if I can get it done in time. But 